Hello and welcome to this short Tinker's Construct tutorial. In this video I will go through the hammer. I will begin with the parts that you need how and what they do. I will go through the material cost and touch upon the material choices that you can make. I will go through how to assemble it, some design aspects and I will have some demonstration of different hammers. To begin with, you need three stencils. You make them as you always do in the stencil table. And all these three are large plate, hammerhead and tough rod. After you made them, you go ahead and, and you craft two parts in the part builder. First of all, I will do the tough rod out of wooden planks. Um, the tool rod will affect the handle modifier. You can see it here. And if I would make it out of cobblestone, the handle modifier will be 0 0.5. If I make it out of other materials, it will, for like example, for example, slime crystals, it will be up to two. This means that the durability will be twice as high with slime compared to wood. After that I will make the hammerhead pattern with the hammerhead and I will use cobblestone. The hammerhead sets the mining level. For cobblestone it's iron. If I would have used iron I can mine redstone and diamonds but this first tool I will make out of stone. Also for the hammerhead material, this will be the material you use to repair the tool. If you make it out of iron, you need iron to repair it. And stone will always be repaired with cobblestone. And this is true even if I build the plates out of iron or stone. The plates will only affect the durability and the mining speed. If I put iron instead, we notice that the speed goes up and the durability goes up as well. And we will need two plates for the basic hammer. In the tool station that we normally use to craft our basic tools, we can't craft the hammer. You can't find it here, so we need to upgrade the tool station to a tool forge. Here we can find the hammer and we also get the pattern here. Place the parts and you will get the stone hammer. Here you can see the durability, mining speed, mining level. If I would exchange the large plates to iron plates, as I said before, they will affect the durability and the mining speed. But the mining level and, as I said, the materials that you will need to repair it will still be untouched. Two iron plates will still be the same. Higher speed and durability, but we can still only mine iron. So, that's our basic hammer. And some quick demonstration. It's not fast at all. Perhaps better than... Perhaps quicker to break nine pieces of cobblestone compared to a stone pickaxe. But still not impressive. And we can't mine redstone ore either. and it will be repaired with cobblestone. When you continue with better materials, for example, cobalt, that's my one of my favorite materials to use for the hammer because it's the fastest material. You can see this in 
the materials book when you find the different materials there it is cobalt it has the mining speed of 11 which is the fastest it's even faster than our strongest material manulin and this is something I personally use as hammerhead and plates and I will demonstrate how that could look first of all we need to make them in the smeltery I have prepared this smeltery with two ingots of aluminum brass and 24 ingots of cobalt begin with to make the parts out of stone for example we still need eight not two this is a common mistake or something that's easy to miss it's due to a bug in tinker's construct if you add all these eight at once the plate will show up if you add them one at a time we can't see it so always put at least as many re resources as the tooltip says. All right, and then we make the hammerhead as well. Go to our smeltery and make the casts out of gold or molten and aluminum brass. And the plate now to fill these costs you still need the same material cost it has, has the same material cost as the as it had before now we can place the hammerhead fill it with eight cobble cobalt and you can see it's much much slower and we need two plates so that's only for the top part and now we have to decide what to make the tool rod out of and I normally say that there is no such thing as the, as the perfect and best tool it depends on how you will use it if you plan to have some kind of auto repair either out of moss or if we have like a charged model with a battery or a capacitor then maybe the durability isn't that important since we will charge it up or auto repair it if the If you do will repair it, make then you could make the tool rod out of slime. Blue slime is the best. It will have a good handle modifier to the cobalt. Then again, if it doesn't matter, if you don't care about durability, we can make it out of paper it will have a really bad modifier but it adds another upgrade slot and if you want to combine them you can use thomium that will add that will have a better handle, handle modifier than paper but not as good as the slime one okay then we can look in the tool forge what this will mean we have the hammerhead and plates and we have three different rods if i start with the paper rod we have the mining speed of 11 durability 2k and four modifiers remaining using the thomium we will have a lot higher a lot better durability still the same mining speed and same number of modifiers if i go for the slime 
we will have a really high durability, but one less modifier. Now I will use the paper because I will put on some upgrade that will make durability more or less uninteresting. Now you can see it's much much faster than the stone version, but we can make it even faster with upgrades. If you place it in a tool forge, now we can start to decide what we want to do. As I said before, we can have ball on moss or a capacitor. I will go for the capacitor this time to make it rechargeable. And we will charge it with RF. This is from thermal expansion. Uh, next up, we can f decide if we want to have fortune. Uh, you need 450 lapis to get full fortune 3 on it. If you're really low on lapis, you could go for a silky jewel. This will add the silky touch and that means that you can save your redstone or diamond ores for later when you have a fortune. Or if you want to just put everything in a pulverizer or macerator to, to get a better output from there. This time I will use fortune and this will take some time so I'll be right back. And this should be the last one. Now we have fortune 3 on it and we only have one modifier used up for that. One other comparison to the silky jewel is that with the jewel you will lose some speed on it. I can demonstrate it on the normal hammer. If you put on a silky, you will, the mining speed will be reduced. This could mean that you will have to put on even more redstone to maintain the mining speed that you will no normally have with a Fortune 3. You can't combine silk and fortune. After this, I think we can recharge it. We have full, full fortune. I think the best upgrade of that is redstone. And now I maxed it out. But we can still add one extra modifier quite easily with a diamond and a block of gold. And this means that we can use 50 more redstone to make it even faster. And I think that's a really good thing to do. So now we have a mining speed of 23. We have very low durability, but I don't care about that since we have the flux modifier and we have fortune 3 and it, I think it's time to demonstrate how it ended up. Quite a good speed and I think we soon will... yeah. A lot of diamonds and lapis and redstone. Personally, I think this stack up is a really good one. It's fast and I have good fortune on it. But then again, if you don't plan to do a lot of underground low level mining, maybe this hammer isn't for you. Plus, we need to recharge it now and then. And with that, I think I've covered most other things that, that you need to know to be able to design a good hammer. There are lots of choices to make and basically they all depend on what materials you do have and how you plan to use it. So 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!